Hello party people. So uh, last week I put out a video called your GoPro footage sucks, let's fix it. And I went over all of the, kind of like the hardware side of things. So I went over GoPro settings and how I get that really smooth footage and yeah, like everything that you need to know before hitting the trail, while hitting the trail or the ski slope or whatever you're doing. And now it's the other half of the equation. You cannot have one without the other. You cannot use the information I'm about to tell you unless you use the settings that I told you about in the last video. It doesn't work unless you do both things and, and vice versa. If you set the settings that I told you in that I told you about in the last video and then didn't do what I do in this video, your video is not going to look very good. So if you haven't watched it yet, make sure you go and watch uh, last week's video and that should be right up top there somewhere. So yeah, do that first. Now, um, we're gonna dive in and I'm gonna show you all the software side of it. So everything that we do to take that base footage that's like really flat, not very much contrast, not no sharpness, all that kind of stuff and turn it into some really beautiful, beautiful action camera footage. And I've got three, maybe four different types, I think four different types of clips I'm gonna show you and go over. One is um, kind of an overcast day. One is full on sunshine with like, like the sun is, you know, there's no like harsh shadows or anything like that. Um, and then the next one is going to be full on sun, but you're underneath a bunch of trees, which is the most difficult thing to deal with. And we're going to cover that. And then also in the snow as well. So uh, without any further ado, let's dive into the program that I use and have used since the very beginning of this channel. And it is called, you know, I don't have any like fancy slides to put up or anything like that. So I'm just going to tell you, it's called DaVinci Resolve. And the one that I'm going to be using today is DaVinci Resolve 14. They actually have 15 out now, which has way more features in it. I just haven't gotten around to upgrading. And then some, I don't typically like to upgrade right, right away anyways, because what if it breaks something on my computer or whatever, and I can't get videos out. Anyways, I'm on 14, they're up to 15, and then it'll be 16, 17 as we go on in the future. So DaVinci Resolve. Um, the reason why I use this program is one, I believe it has the absolute hands down best coloring software to it. It's very intuitive, very easy for me to see what I need to do to my footage and very easy for me to do it. Now, I am not in this whole thing to spend as much time as I can um, color correcting footage. That, that's like, it's fine, I don't mind doing it, but it's not exactly my, my heart's calling in life. And so everything that I do, I do it in a way that's gonna be as fast and effective as humanly possible and put out a really good quality result. So what I'm gonna show you it's not, there's not a lot to it, to be perfectly honest. It's basically like three things I do, and uh, that's about it, which is nice, and that's the way I want it. So let's dive into the program. Um, this is what it looks like here. And so this is kind of the, the main editing screen. When you first open it up, it's over on this tab here, and I was pulling in some footage uh, to show you guys uh, the different types of, yeah, it looks like I have four clips there, the different types of footage and way to, uh, to make them look their best. And so if you notice, I have a couple of other things in here. That's because um, I use a video template. So I've created this template that I use, and this isn't that useful for people who don't upload lots of videos. But uh, for me, it's handy to have everything already within, already set up, like the, my flickering logo, for example. You know, you see that pop up. I have to manually create that flicker, and it takes for freaking ever if I have to actually do that manually every single time. Um, and I have, uh, you know, my little, Lone Ranger watermark on the side. All of these things are all done already every time I open up um, a new folder. So I just go into video template and then I hit save as, and then I use that as whatever video title that I'm working on. Anyways, so here's our editing area. And this is not gonna be about editing, it's gonna be about making the footage look good, okay? So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start with, this footage right here. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag it onto the timeline, like so. Oh, and I should also mention, oops, I should also also mention that I am not in any way, shape or form a pro at using this software. I've, as I said in my last video, I'm a professional photographer and I use Photoshop almost every single day, but, and I have done so for like a decade, but I am not a Photoshop expert. I learn just as much as I need to, to get by and to do it smoothly. And then after that, I just I can't be bothered. And it's the same, and it's the same with um, this, DaVinci Resolve. 
Although I know that there's faster ways for me to be able to do certain things and I'm willing to bet a bunch of you guys have tips and tricks and I'd love to hear them down in the comments. But anyways, I'm not a pro with this software. I just know what I need to know to make it look good. So let's dive into this here. Okay, so I'm just running this off of a, a little wimpy laptop right now so it is also not going to be very smooth, but that doesn't matter because what we're really gonna be looking at is frame by frame. So this is the base footage right here. This is me in Arizona. Um, there's my pal Will up front there and uh, Eric was behind me riding and this was an awesome ride. This was on uh, the hog trails. There's like a whole bunch of different trails with the word hog in it out in Sedona. And so here's our first situation. Now, I set my camera up the way it needs to be set up to capture as much data as possible. If you'll notice, there is, it's full on sunshine. Um, there's some shadow, there's some highlight. But if you notice, other than right where, basically where the sun is, there's so much data, it's really flat. It's not very contrasty, despite us being in a relatively contrasty situation. And that's because I set things up the way I wanted to and I set my white balance manually it, uh, and I set it for sunny, or which is like 5,500 Kelvin. If I didn't do that, because of how much red there is in this photo or in this frame, in the video, um, my camera would go, whoa, it's so red, I need to make it more green. And then it would look very strange and it, the rock wouldn't look the way it should. And even right now it doesn't, but it's all that information is there and it's just waiting to be pulled out. All right, so let's go straight into color correction because that's what we're all here to see. So I'm gonna go over to this tab over here and away we go. So over, this is really important. Over on this side are the scopes and it's set to parade. And so all that means is it's a visual representation of the red channel, the green channel, and the blue channel, RGB. And over here, like up here, this is where the whites are kind of like clipping. This is when it gets so bright that you're losing detail. And over at the other end of it, this is absolute black. And so that's when the darker areas, you start to lose detail and it just goes to straight up just black pixels. So you're losing detail there too. So this shows me what sort of space I have to play with. And so I'm always going to be watching those scopes as I move my, my color around and my sharpness. Well, not so much sharpness, but my color around. So I'm gonna go over to here, this little target looking thing. These are the color wheels. And I don't know why they call them these things. It's like lift, gamma, gain. It's actually like shadow, mid-tones, highlights. So everything in the film industry is like named really stupid things and I don't really know why. Anyways. So what we're gonna do first off is set my white point and my black point. So gain, again, that's highlight. And so if you see, as I move this up, well, let's see here. Oh, I know what's going on, hold on. I have to, this is what I do every single time. I have to disengage this so I'm not trying to color correct my logo. There we go, okay. So I'm gonna take this gain and there's this little dial thing down here. You see me rolling this around. And as I'm bringing it up, you can see on the scopes over there that I'm bringing the highlights up right to peak, right there. And then, actually I'm gonna bring it a little bit below. I'm gonna show you something else there. And then I'm gonna take the shadows and I can drop them down to about there. Kind of like halfway to actually where I want them to be, but I'm also gonna use contrast. So you, you can do these things in different ways. Technically what I've just done was add contrast. Um, by bringing up the highlights and bringing down the shadows. That's creating contrast. And I can dial in exactly how much of that I want and that is the key to all of this. If there's just like mass amounts of contrast, which is what you get when you choose GoPro color and not flat, um, it's just, uh, yeah, it's a mess. So I'm also gonna add some saturation and I like to really saturate my videos, make it look nice and juicy. So I added saturation and now I'm gonna add contrast with the actual contrast slider. And so you can see this looking pretty dang good already comparatively to what it looked like before. Uh, let's see here. And that, so that's what it looked like before. I actually don't know how to do like a straight up before and after. Speaking of things I don't know how to do. So we're gonna go there. I'm just gonna redo exactly what I did nice and fast. So I'm bringing up the highlights, bringing down the shadows, juicing up the contrast a little bit and bringing up the saturation. And there we go. So now that's what I've done there. That looks, that looks pretty dang good to me. Now, sometimes, actually I'll show you on a different clip, but the other thing I always go and do, I always go to this tab right here, which is where you go to sharpen. You go over, go over to radius. It's always a good idea to zoom in. 
I don't even see where the zoom is. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I'm a pro. Zoom into 100%, it's usually a good idea. And then we take radius and we actually pull it down. And I find I can get to about there. 47, 46, before things get a little too crispy. Right there for sharpness. Perfect. Go back to fit. Uh, that's it. And then I'm gonna play this and it's gonna be super chunky because as soon as I add sharpening on my computer because it's just a little slow laptop, uh, it cannot handle it. But look at that. I think it looks pretty good. I'm happy with that. I might add a little bit more. I'm gonna go back over here. I'm gonna add a little bit more saturation. Just a touch to make it act what it actually looked like to the eye. And then as I'm playing through these frames, I'm keeping an eye on my scopes to make sure it doesn't dive into absolute black. And even in this area here, what I can do, if there was a lot of this where it kind of went into shadow like that, the gamma is mid-tones, and so that's in between the highlights and the shadows, and I can play around with that if I wanted to. So I could bring up mid-tones, pull down the blacks again, and just kind of play with those like that. And there you go, looking good. And that was it, yep. Pretty complicated stuff, hey? So once again, actually I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna go over this again on this one, let's go over everything again on the next clip. Because you'll learn very quickly that I just kind of do these things over and over and over again. All right, next clip. This is me in Santa Cruz, flying down the trail. Now this is the most difficult, uh, this is absolutely hands down the most difficult thing to film for a camera and most difficult to color correct because you have mass contrast. It's like full on sun, very bright day, and it is blasting through the trees and so you have all those speckles. And I promise you, if you don't put it onto ProTune flat or whatever the equivalent is for what camera you have, you're not gonna see anything on this trail. It's just gonna be 100% crazy contrast. Like it's gonna look, it's gonna look more like this. And I'm sure you've, you've seen that kind of thing before. And even worse than that, because I have set my white balance. If you didn't set your white balance, it would look more like, it would look more kind of like, kind of like this. Because it would juice up the greens and pull out the reds. But we don't want none of that action right there. So we're gonna zero that back out. And look at all that, look at all that detail we have. So we're gonna have a look at this and do the exact same things that I did before on the last one. I'm gonna set my white point right to about there. Now, I'm gonna let it play through to where we see some more highlights. There we go. So that's still controlled in the highlights. It's not going crazy on us. Now what we're gonna do, is we're gonna bring down the shadows, not too much, like you can see as I'm bringing this down, that's where the contrast really starts showing up. So I'm gonna bring it to about there. And also use my contrast to do that a little bit more as well. Oh, hi Beth. My wife is texting me. Um, so I'm gonna see what this looks like. That's not too bad. And you can see I have a lot more range to go down at the bottom of these scopes to make it a little bit darker in the blacks. But I don't wanna get too far with it. And once again, this is all about me being able to choose the kind of settings I want. Whereas before, if you leave it in standard settings for your GoPro, you can't choose, you just get what you get. Add some saturation. Of course, we're gonna add some sharpening. I know I'm pretty much always good to go down to about 46 or 47 before things get weird. And there's that. So now we have contrast. It's not like totally washed out or anything, um, but the highlights are controlled. The shadows are controlled and it looks pretty dang good. Like you see when you go into a darker area, it's pretty dark at first, but then the camera compensates uh, with its own exposure settings. And this is looking good to me. And this is the hardest thing for people for, to, to color correct. All right, there's that one. Next, uh, let's go back over to the editing tab. All right, let's go into some snow here. Snow biking, that was fun. I need to do more of that this year for sure. Okay, my poor laptop's like, can't handle this. All right, so now snow. Now this, I'm in the same settings. Um, I'm choosing my white balance, and it was a very cloudy day, so I set it to, I believe, 6,500 Kelvin. Either 6,500 Kelvin 
or a 6,000 Kelvin. One of the two, it depends on how socked in you are with clouds. This was a really, really gray, very dim day, so I'm quite sure I set it to 6,500. So this is our base footage here. Now let's go over to, hello, uh, let's go over to here. Now you can see this, look at, everything's in the mid-tones right now. Like it's just all just sitting there, right in the center. So what we can do is bring, and before I go any further, I mean, you see on the GoPro ads where it's like, the, the snow is always so crisp and beautiful and white and like it just looks amazing. Um, that's because they go and set their white point after the fact. So I'm gonna bring it up right up to there and then I'm gonna bring this down and then bring this up just to kind of see where I want things. I'm gonna crank the saturation. And because I set my white point, there's no weird casts that I need to worry about. White is white already, which is great. Um, and we're gonna do some contrast there. And now, this is a real crappy situation as far as like filming goes because it is so cloudy and snowy that day. There's almost no contrast in general, So, but we've kind of created it a little bit. And now the snow is bright and it is how you'd wanna see it. And I can bring it up higher. I just don't want it to get all the way to the top because then you're gonna start losing detail in the snow. But we can make it look a little bit more vibrant like that. And I already brought the saturation up so you see the nice bright orange and the yellows. And that looks pretty good. Um, I'm just gonna go and see if I can... I'm kinda paying attention to the trees right now. I like the trees to be nice and contrasty. Like, so. There we go. So the, so the snow is nice and crisp and white. The colors are where I want them to be. And now this is looking really good for, for snow video. I just gotta go and sharpen it. Bring it down to about 46. Boop. Done. All right. Sweet. Next up, you see how fast this is going? Very easy. It's really just about watching those scopes. That's what this is all about. Uh, and this is from last week's video with Eric. And this is more like sort of, the sun is sort of out, sort of kind of, kind of behind clouds and we're in a situation where there's white snow and also brown dirt um, and then green trees everywhere. The white balance, if you left it in auto white balance on your camera, it would be a mess in this situation. It would look terrible and really anemic looking, like just not, just not good. So we're gonna go ahead and color correct this. I'm just gonna play it through. Yeah, let's just, well, let's see. Where's a good place to stop this here? Sorry about the the jerkiness of the of the laptop. Let's go back so you can kind of see my bars in there too. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so uh, let's go in and correct for this one. Some magic settings, which you have now learned are not magic at all, and I really am not doing anything special. I'm gonna bring up the highlights. I'm gonna bring down the black point a little bit. I'm gonna crank the contrast up to where I want it to be. I'm gonna juice up the saturation a little bit. A bit, and sharpen. Let the choppiness begin. But there, there you go. That's it, that's all. Now look at this, this looks good. This is how it looked to my eye. Vibrant and contrasty and greens and the brown of the soil. This is how it looked, and this is the most important thing for me, is that I wanna be able to share, for me personally, I wanna be able to share the experience of these rides with you guys in the best, most accurate way possible. And so this is why I set my settings like this. Um, as you can see, it's not as easy as just setting it all on your GoPro and then just grabbing the footage and uploading to YouTube, but this looks a billion, trillion, zillion times better than that in just about every single situation and it doesn't take that long to do, especially if you're just like throwing up one clip, like you're pretty much just color correcting once. Um, for me, I actually color correct every single cut that I put in. So every single time I throw in a new clip, you know, you see the, the, the scene change and I'm riding a different trail or whatever within the same video, I separately color correct every single one of them because situations change. Sometimes it's darker, sometimes it's lighter. Um, that sort of a thing, like the contrast is different. So I, I go through and I do this same process 
through every single cut out of an entire video. And that's fine, it doesn't take too long. But this, yeah, that's that, right there. And it started right there. So there you go. Uh, I'm gonna see if there's anything else. Okay, perfect. So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna slam these together. Whoops, turn on my little thing there. Right, like that. All right, so let's say we're gonna export this ultra amazing, crazy riding around the world video. Um, we've gone through and we've color corrected. Awesome. Now we're gonna go over to the export tab. And uh, now um, I just use this setting here. So it's the YouTube setting, but it's not, I, like I mess around with it basically. So this is a 4K setting, 2160, um, or ultra HD setting anyways. I choose where I wanna put it over here. Um, this is kind of stupid. You can't see where to name the actual file unless you click on file and then name it whatever you want to name it. So anyways, go back to the video tab. QuickTime H.264, beauty. Um, this is uh, Ultra HD, that's what I want. I always, always export, it doesn't matter what's going on, I always export in uh, 23.976 or like 24 frames per second basically. Now, going down to here, this is important. I go away from automatic for quality and I go restrict to, I typically do about 85,000 uh, kilobits per second. It's just a nice safe zone. Like basically the better quality video and the more data that you're pumping out into the main file that you're gonna upload, the better. Because it doesn't matter how good quality your file is, once you bring it into YouTube, YouTube is gonna crunch it to all and squish it and, and stretch it to all those different file sizes that you can view it on, whether it's 720p or 1080 or 4K, whatever. Um, it creates all of those files, and in doing so, it compresses the living hell out of everything. So the more data that I can give YouTube, the better end product that you guys will see on the channel. So I go to 85,000, and then I go to multiple pass, um, uh, it, because it looks better. What is it doing? I have no idea and I'm perfectly okay with that. Uh, everything else is good. I don't touch anything else. Perfect. And then I go over, set it into add to the render queue and make sure you set your in and out markers. So that's where I want the video to start. I just pressed I. Let's say we're just gonna export this. And that's where I want it to finish. So I press O for out and then I start the render. I hit start render, and then it just does its thing, churns it out, and I've got a nice 4K or Ultra HD file that I can upload to YouTube. It looks exactly how I want it. I've controlled the highlights, I've controlled the shadows and the sharpness, and I've taken that flat, very non-contrasting, non-sharp uh, video and made it very vibrant and true to life, and uh, it's awesome, and I love doing it. I really love to see the finished product when I when I actually get it back on the computer and I make my adjustments and it's just like, ah. Oh. Like I love, I love watching my Arizona videos, uh, the Sedona videos, because it's just like, I just throw it up on my laptop screen and watch it because it's just such a surreal experience just to even see it in that color and sharpness. It just brings me right back there, it really is. It's such a big difference compared to just leaving it on auto and having it all mushy and like weird colors and too contrasty. Doing it right brings you back into the moment and allows you to share it with others. So that's why I put this extra effort in. So I hope this was really helpful for you guys and girls. Um, if you have any questions about anything, you can leave them down uh, in the comments. Um, I'm gonna do, I'm always open to Q&A, non-stop Q&A with my Patreon subscribers and I'll try and answer any questions I can below in the comments. Um, if you have any suggestions for future videos that you'd like to see from me, uh, definitely put it down in the comments as well. Please like and subscribe to this channel. I'm actually trying to take this channel full time, which is a rather terrifying thing to do. So any way that you guys can support the channel is great, either by watching, liking, subscribing, sharing, Patreon, all those kinds of fun things. It's all much appreciated and I can keep making these videos for you guys. So thank you so much. I'm gonna see you guys out there and uh, yeah, have a great, great week of riding. Cheers.